Hey guys, Chris here from My Fine EMS Training. Let's talk real quick about airway ramping or positioning. Uh, and really, this is a forgotten art. So I want you to take a second and think about how many pillows do you sleep with at night? Right now, you're getting ready for bed, uh, whether it's next couple minutes, couple hours, still got about half a day left. How many pillows are you going to snuggle up with when you go to bed? I'm not talking throw pillows. I'm talking the ones under your head, right? Is it two, three, one? Are you a belly sleeper? So most people say one or two pillows. And I ask you, why do you sleep with that one or two pillows at night? Well, because unbeknownst to you, you're trying to streamline your airway. You're trying to elevate the posterior aspect of your head so that your ear is in line with your sternal notch and you're lifting up your tracheal line and your glottic opening so that it's easier to breathe. And it also helps lift your tongue off the posterior aspect of your airway. So ramping is just that. Ramping is lifting the head up so that the ear is in line with the chest, so that the tracheal line is up, the glottic opening is more up and out, more anteriorly presented, so that your tongue is up and away and it's much easier to manage the airway. How about this? How about this patient right here? This is from the critical care practitioner um, links below. Look at this patient laying supine. Their trachea, tracheal line will be pointing down. Their glottis will be pointing down. Look how many hospital blankets it took to ramp this patient up to get their ear in line with their sternal notch. And at the end of the day, that's all we're doing ear hole in line with the sternal notch. It may take a lot, but I challenge you next time you run that patient where you're going to manage their airway that does not have a C-spine emergency, ramp them up. You will ease your airflow. So by not doing that and by allowing the head to be pushed back and down, we push down on the tongue, increase airway resistance. The tongue blocks the glottic opening. And it's that soft esophagus that actually gets the least airway resistance and gets the majority of your airflow with your ventilatory support. So by not ramping them, you have a higher potential of filling up their esophagus and their stomach with air. It's the path of least resistance. So if you don't kink or push down on that trachea and now force the air to have to go down and then up into it versus just down and into the esophagus, path of least resistance, you're going to find better airway compliance by ramping your patient. So if we don't have them ramped, the tongue blocks the glottic opening, where does the air go? In this nice, smooth esophagus, smooth epithelial tissue. And what we don't want is we don't want the whoopee cushion effect, where their stomach fills up with air and the esophagus gets pressed on I'm sorry, the stomach gets pressed on, the esophagus does not have anything to retract it back, and you get old faithful. You get the whoopee effect, right, where you get the vomit geyser out the patient's mouth. All you do by ramping them, lifting their head up, ear in line with the sternal notch, you introduce the glottic opening to a nice maximal opening and upward facing position, so it becomes the path of least resistance. So you get easier airway compliance. So here's a uh, little video from the Airway Interventions and Management and Emergency site. I want you to watch what happens. Now the patient, it's a cadaver, patient's head is down flat against the bed. Ear is not in line with the chest axis. Watch what happens to the glottic opening up here when they position this patient ear in line with the chest. Look how nice, crisp, and easy that is. It's actually pushing down on the esophagus. So it's making the glottic opening the path of least resistance. So at the end of the day, you're just trying to align the ear hole with the sternal notch, ear with the sternal notch. That's throw pillows from the patient's couch. That's throw pillows from the patient's bed, stuffed animals from the patient's bed. It's one of your bags. It's a couple hospital beds, a couple blankets. It's nothing crazy. It's just a little bit under there to represent the same one or two pillows you snuggle up to at night when you go to bed so that when you go to bed and you have re decreased work of breathing, you get easier, more efficient airflow.
So I hope that helped with ramping. Please carry a couple towels and blankets on the back of your cot and put it under your patient's head when you're managing their airway to see how much easier it is in terms of that management and decreasing the airway resistance into the glottic opening so the air goes where it's supposed to get. As always, if you have any questions, you can hit us up at info at lifelineemstraining.com and we hope you have a great day.